Jake Mintz, Jordan Schusterman here at Minute Maid Park. Certainly one of the weirder stadiums in Major League Baseball mm-hmm. for the 2021 World Series. Yes, and of course there's been a lot of postseason baseball played here in this building, and we want to take you on a little home run tour to show you some of the landing spots of the most famous home runs in this ballpark's history. Let's go. All right, our first stop on the Dinger Tour is, of course, the famous Crawford Boxes, just 315 feet down the line from home plate. And, look, Fenway, it's known, okay, they got the Green Monster. It's really close to home plate, but this is this is even crazier. This feels so, <laughs> so, so close. I can reach out and just tap the left fielder. He's standing right there. If you ever wondered what it's like to play left field in Major League Baseball, this is the closest you're going to get. The The proximity of it is so jarring, you feel like you should just catch a fly ball. It it doesn't feel like a home run no. when you stand here. You know, there have been many, what I think a lot of fans would call cheapies <laughs> over the years. The one that sticks out in my mind, 2017 World Series Game 5, Yasiel Puig with what I think of as the butt poke home run where he reached the tush out and just kind of flared it over the wall. Yeah, but anything's possible. In the Crawford Vikings, when it's this close, you could just hit a sky-high pop-up that lands in the first row. You can hit a line drive that would be a double anywhere else, and boom, you got yourself a home. But the Crawford boxes are very unique, and it's just one part of what makes this park so special. All right, one of the defining features of Minute Maid Park, the train tracks in left field behind the wall. Now, we can't actually get up there because it is a hazard so we are going to show you how far away it is from here now there have been some iconic postseason blasts that have reached all the way up there jordan which ones kind of stick out in your mind well we got to start with albert pools in the 2005 nlcs such a legendary blast off bradledge that people forgot that the cardinals didn't even win that series but everyone remembers the pools homer that was the first of many then we get george springer he hit one in a very similar location in the 2017 World Series. And then, speaking of World Series, Juan Soto. I mean, that's a much more elite group. He hit it up there. Oppo. I'm saying, opposite field, as a lefty, kind of to the end of where it says Astros community leaders. Mm-hmm. But the furthest postseason home run, kind of furthest towards center mm-hmm. field, was actually Kike Hernandez yeah. like two weeks ago. Mm-hmm. Hit one to the edge of that big oxy sign. Mm-hmm. It's a really kind of fun distance marker over there it's around 440 450 feet if you hit it up there usually the windows are closed if they're open you can actually hit the buildings across the street i don't think anybody's ever done it i know there have been some that have landed on the street but there is a distance marker it says 422 up on the building beyond the window unfortunately the windows and the roof are closed for almost all of the games here at minute Maid, so it's harder to actually exit the stadium that's why you see so many balls clanging off uh, those windows and kind of obscuring just how far those balls are going. If you hit the train, you should win the train. Yeah, you should it's get. Your train. They should, you know, like if you hit a car, it's some stadiums like you win yeah. the car. If you hit the train. train, you should get like an Amtrak to yourself. So left field gets all the love here at Minute Maid Park, but right field. Honestly, harder. We're in the upper deck. You see fewer home runs hit here than you do over the train tracks. It might not be as visually appealing, but it's arguably more impressive. Yes, this is section 254. Uh, one of the farthest home runs ever hit in this ballpark was Prince Fielder, 2011. He hit a ball uh, measured at the time. This is pre stat cast, but still, I believe it. 486 feet that landed a few rows behind me over here. This is also the landing spot of a few uh, particularly prodigious Jordan Alvarez blasts in the last few years. And most famously, Barry Bonds hit home run number 70 in 2001 uh, to one of the first few rows here in 254. Let's talk about the scoreboard. The enormous screen above my head is incredibly far from home plate. Hilariously so. It has been hit by a baseball twice. Once by Barry Bonds during the 2004 Home Run Derby. He hit it off the right side at the very bottom, right on the edge of the scoreboard. And then two years ago in 2019, that's right, Jordan Alvarez hit it in batting practice, damaging one of the panels on the board. Jordan Alvarez and Barry Bonds, are they as good as one another? I mean, I, maybe. maybe. It's very possible. We'll see. But yes, I think right field needs a little bit more love. These home runs are absolutely crazy. Do we see a home run hit up here in this series? Off the scoreboard. <laughs> Off the scoreboard, yeah, do we no. Do we see a 600-foot home run Off in the, the series? Off the scoreboard, no. Into the second deck, I'll say yes. Chaz McCormick, opposite field homer off the scoreboard, book it now. Can't wait. All right, we are standing in the second deck in right field, looking out over center field here at Minute Maid Park. And this used to be the site of one of the strangest 
things in all of baseball, Towles Hill, which has been gone for several years now, but there used to be a hill in play in center field. They've now replaced it. They put the fence a little bit closer. It used to be 436 to dead center with a little hill. Now it's 409, still very far away for center. We got some seating in there. We got the green uh, batter's eye with the Houston H. And this section now is still very hard to get to. This is still very far away, but it's not quite as crazy as Towles Hill. <laughs> they built Towles Hill for the sake of being weird. Like they had a conversation, this is true, there was a meeting, they were like, we need this, this be stadium to look unique. Yeah. So they put a hill and they put a flagpole right. in fear territory on the hill. Now there were only a couple home runs above and beyond the hill because you know, it was 435 <laughs> feet. I would say Justin Upton's mm -hmm. is one of the more famous ones. Yep. Now in recent years with the big grass batter's eye, there's really only been one home run hit above that and yep. that belongs to, of course, Joey Gallo. Joey Gallo, yes, I and mean, he was playing all those games in the AL West. He hit one just above the H to the right. There have, of course, been even more uh, but down here in this red seating section. Akil Badu hit one there this year. Of course, Jordan, Jason Castro. Oh, what's that guy's name? Oh, yeah, Shohei Otani. Heard of him. He hit one there uh, this season. So that's a little bit more reachable, but that's still one of the farthest uh, seating uh, sections that you can hit in terms of center field in the big league. It is still really far. Now, look, we missed House Hill, but it's probably for the best that it's gone. <laughs> Let's be real. No, you want it back. He wants it back. He wants that. That is back. a hill that I will die on. <laughs> All right, we are now on our final stop of our Dinger landing spot tour, and I don't even know what the section is called. All I know is, oh my God, we are basically at the top of the foul pole in right field, and apparently, this is a theme. Apparently, Jordan Alvarez hit a home run up here. He's only been in the league like three years, and he has all the farthest home runs. This is ridiculous. He hit a ball up here in 2019, right down the right field line, that landed in a seat. That seat was removed, painted orange, <laughs> like the Ted Williams seat. Mm -hmm. The only two seats that have been, uh, their color changed, yes. Ted Williams, Jordan Alvarez. Unfortunately, there were renovations here. The section is totally different. This is now standing room. That seat is gone. There should, honestly, like, there should be a should plaque around be, here. Should still be marked. It should be like a miniature bronze figurine of Jordan Alvarez. Now, right here's here. the good news. Probably won't be the last time he hits it up here. And so I'm sure he will have the opportunity to make another dent or two uh, here in this section. But yes, this is our final spot. This is right down the line. In terms of actual distance, maybe not as far as you might think as some of the, you know, the 470, yeah. 480 foot ones to deep right center or to center field. But this is crazy. I mean, we are so high up here. Again, we're almost at the top of the foul pole. And this would really be something yeah. if we see one up here in the World Series. Jordan, what have you learned through this tour? What, how have you changed as a person? How has your perception of this stadium been altered? Uh, you know, we've been here before, but I, I like Minute Maid Park. I think this is cool, especially with the roof closed. It is so cavernous, and I like that there are all kinds of weird targets. Even though we don't have Tiles Hill anymore, I still think this is a very unique Dinger Park, and I can't wait to see which home runs are hit here uh, in the World Series. It's certainly not cookie cutter. It is different. It is odd. It is weird. It's I the juice box, baby. Still we should have the hill. Yeah, Jake Vince, Jordan Schusterman, this has been your Dinger Tour around... Minute Maid Park. See you all later.